it appears like Mark Zuckerberg has finally destroyed Google. I think it's time for my workout. We all know the Facebook owner has always disliked Google. <laughs> and he has been plotting for years to exterminate his rivals. It's time for everyone's favorite. Work. <laughs> After all the frequent and sometimes unnecessary updates on meta apps like Facebook, WhatsApp, and even Instagram, he might have gotten what he always wanted. The destruction of Google. Besides, you might be unaware, but both companies have battled before, and Zuckerberg effortlessly came out on top. Meta has also recently launched a new WhatsApp update that contains an AI that is equally as impressive as ChatGPT. And that means that thousands, if not millions of people, might just stop using Google. Like, why do I need to use Google when I can simply ask Meta AI any question and get my answer instantly? Now you see what I'm talking about? But first, let's go back to the beginning. When Google Plus launched in 2011, the battle line was drawn. Mark Zuckerberg has always wanted to totally dominate the tech space, and he didn't like the fact that someone else was coming to challenge him. I own this space, get out of here. Facebook was doing great, with millions of daily users logging into it. But here came this new thing called Google Plus, and Google Plus was quite unpredictable too. Google was already an established search engine. And with the launch of Google+, Plus, which, according to former Facebook employee Antonio Garcia Martinez, was in some ways better than Facebook, Zuckerberg was thrown into panic. Uh-oh. Wait, hold up. All over Facebook, alarm bells were ringing as Mark sought ways to rally his troops for retaliation. Mark vowed to destroy Google. Things even became more heated when Google started trying to buy Zuckerberg's troops. Hey, want to work for Google? If you can't defeat them in battle, you can as well tempt them with money. <laughs> Basically, Google instituted a policy that anyone who got an offer from Facebook would receive a counteroffer from Google, as they both battled for tech's best brands. It might surprise you, but Google actually did that. Well, somehow Facebook still managed to keep attracting really good brains. One time, Zuckerberg was so nervous that he declared a lockdown. The lockdown was him saying no one could leave the building while they were confronted with any threat whether technical or competitive. But looking back now, the lockdown wasn't the only reason why Facebook attracted and retained the best engineering brains. To begin with, the pay was really nice. Yeah, that's kind of obvious. I mean, it's Silicon Valley, and good engineers are not only highly sought after, they also walk home with big, heavy bags of money. Well, you could go for a suitcase if you like, but the fact remains that Facebook and other tech companies pay their engineers considerably well. But more than just the pay, Facebook allowed its engineers a certain amount of freedom, different from its rivals. So in most Silicon Valley companies, engineers are treated special, and rightfully so. They are the backbone of the company, always tweaking codes and basically making things work. But Facebook took this engineering first perspective to a whole new level. They were treated like VIPs attending the Met Gala. In essence, as long as you played with codes and didn't break things too often, you were golden. And from what I have observed about software engineers, they like to be appreciated, and they also like to do their own thing and break some stuff if necessary. You can say engineers have that weird spirit of rebellion, always wanting to have it their own way, and Facebook provided such an environment. For example, a Georgia college kid named Chris Putnam, in the early days of Facebook, created a virus that made Facebook profiles resemble MySpace. At the time, MySpace was a big deal. Unfortunately, it turned out that the virus young Putnam created went rogue and started stealing Facebook user data. Now think about it. What would you do to the kid? You would probably hand him over to the FBI and make sure he was dealt with. But that's not what Facebook did. The boy's ingenuity got their attention, and Facebook co-founder Dustin Moskovitz invited the kid for an interview and offered him a job. Chris Putnam would then go on to become one of Facebook's more famous engineers. That just tells you how Facebook operates. The company's culture was different. Young kids with no college certificate who could code were making half a million a year working 14 hours a day on the company's campus while being fed three times a day. All they needed to do was write and review codes or comment on new features in internal Facebook groups. With such a company culture, it wasn't difficult to attract engineers who just wanted to write code. Talk about the typical types of nerds you see in the movies. Besides the company culture, when Google Plus was launched, Zuckerberg internally declared an all-out war against it. Everyone in the company was aware of just how much was at stake. If you compared both apps, Google Plus was better, 
and even Zuckerberg knew it. Oh, come on, we are losing. But he was ready for the battle. On the day Google Plus was launched, Zuckerberg contacted one of Google's ad product managers, named Paul Adams. That night, they had a closed-door meeting with Zuckerberg and a couple members of the high command inside a small conference room. Here is where it gets interesting. Before defecting to Facebook, Paul was one of the product designers for Google+. That night, Zuckerberg got Paul Adams to snitch on Google+, before he finally became part of Zuckerberg's troops. It was a war, and Zuckerberg made sure to use all the weapons at his disposal. Ultimately, Google Plus couldn't compete in the social media scene. We shall yield! And it was shut down in 2019 due to low usage. I'm sure most of you never had Google Plus accounts. And even if you did, you barely used them. Google in 2019 launched Google Currents, which was kind of like an upgraded version of Google Plus. Once again, Facebook came out on top as the Currents thing failed woefully and was shot down in 2023. Google is now more focused on other things like YouTube, the search engine, and Google Workspace, which is a collection of Office apps like Gmail, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Meet, and more. And that's how Facebook, which is now called Meta, won the battle. But I really don't think Zuckerberg is satisfied. Meta recently launched a new AI which it incorporated into WhatsApp. Personally, I like to think that it isn't much of a threat to Google. I'm saying those at OpenAI, the owners of ChatGPT, should be more worried about Meta AI than Google. Instead of going head-on to battle Google, Zuckerberg has decided to play it smart this time. Social media might be Meta's strongest point, but Google dominates search engines. Not even Microsoft has been able to compete. So this time around, Zuckerberg has. Instead of developing its own search engine, Meta AI integrates real-time Google search results. This means that users can now receive Google search results instantly on WhatsApp. Well, I need to give it up for Zuckerberg. That man is really smart. In conclusion, Zuckerberg might have destroyed Google+, Plus, but Google as a company is still standing strong, and now both companies are helping each other rather than shooting ballistic missiles at each other. Let me know what you think about Meta AI in the comments section. Do you think it's cool, or perhaps you feel it's unnecessary? I'd like to hear from you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more. Until I see you again in my next video, bye for now.